Welcome to the Dice Tower, a series of video reviews about board and card games. Here are your hosts, Tom Vassell and Sam Healy. Been like a while since we've done a Miami yeah, Vice. Yeah, I know, just the two of us. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna get a comment on that. All right. Free. Today, today we're talking about a game called Francis Drake. Now, Francis Drake is from uh, Eagle Games. It was a I game was from England. <laughs> yeah, Francis Drake himself was. Mm-hmm. Uh, the it was a game that when I saw it set up at Origins, it looked pretty cool. Yeah. At the same cool. time, it looked. You know, we start reading the rules, and I read this worker placement, mm-hmm. and Sam was hoping that it would be very piratey. Yeah. Well, that, no, that's what you were hoping, because I said... Fight, the, fighting intensity. The word attack is in here. Now, it's a yeah. huge... I mean, look how big this is. That's huge. And it's yeah. not light. No, it's not. So, anyhow, very we'll take a look at it and be back. You can see it's a, a large board with a big map of the Caribbean. And the whole game takes place over three different years. Over here is another board. This board is basically here for the sole purpose of keeping supplies, uh, the different supplies that you'll need. There's barrels. Uh, then there's gray, which stands for crewmen. There's black, which stands for cannon. Purple stands for trade goods. We have silver, gold, and jewels, different uh, other trade goods. Uh, things Admiral, the Governor, and the Informant, things like that that you can get as the game progresses. Now the game, has, like I said, is split into three parts over here, three different years, and in each year you're going to do the same thing. You're going to be going along this track here. You can see it starts with the blue ship, starting with the crew, and goes all the way down, there's a line, and then you go up to the top and go all the way back over here and around. And what you'll be doing, players will be on their turn and you'll go in turn order so you'll see here that it's blue green yellow orange and red so blue would go first and place this on any action they want here along this this line now once you pick an action your next action has to be beyond that you can never go back so i could pick this one for example and then later on i could pick this one and i can go as slowly as i want realizing of course that other players might be jumping ahead and getting the spots that I want as the game progresses. Now these spots here are placed on top of the spots on the board and there's different tiles depending on the number of players and in the second and third round these tiles are shuffled so that the order of the different things will change. Now the different spots you can see here that in the crew that will give you each spot you go to gives you crew. Here in the guns they give you cannons. Here in the supplies they give you supplies. Sometimes like for example when you go to the queen spot here you get, to, you get a black cube and a purple cube and you get to upgrade your ship to a galleon. Um, then there's different spots on the board that will give you special tiles and you're basically moving along when you get to the very end here you are able to take one thing of your choice once you go here and then once you're finished you'll put your ship here and the first person to finish is going to be able to go out exploring before anybody else. There are some spots that let you upgrade your ship to a galleon so when that happens you would take your ship off the board and instead put your galleon piece there. When everyone's ready to go then the second half of each round begins. In the second half of each round, players are going to take numbered discs that they have. They have a one, two, three, and four disc that they're going to be placing out to show their four different voyages. There's also a golden hind disc. That's one of the spots you can get as a worker placement. This just basically goes before everybody else. And then sometimes you can get a ghost ship. There's a spot up here, and I guess I should mention it because it's the only time in the game you can do it here at the tavern. You roll a die when you go to the tavern, and on one to two you get a ghost ship. Three to four you get two crewmen, five to six you get three crewmen. Well, if you have that ghost ship, you have an extra disc, which you basically use as a bluffing disc. And then in turn order, players are going to place their discs around at the different locations, and more than one player can go to a certain location. 
When this is done, we'll turn the locations face up and we'll see here, okay, three comes before four. So the person who put out the three gets to go to that location first and do what the location does. Now some of the locations are very simple. They're just trading ports like here. When you go here, each person who goes to these spots and whoever has the lower numbers goes first, of course, uh, can trade one of their purple trade goods for one of these other trade tiles um, like the tobacco and indigo, etc. And so there's three different spots to go for those. You can also go and attack places. Here's, a, for example, a fort that you can attack. You need two cannons, which you discard, and you also need one soldier here. However, one of the uh, special abilities that players get if they control the governor, for example, uh, at the beginning of each round, they're going to be able to place tiles here. And so when you go attack there, you turn it over and, oh, you actually have to have two crew to take this out. Although he may have put no crew, uh, just where you only need one. So whoever has the governor has an advantage because they get to place these tiles out at the beginning of a round. But let's say I have, in this example, one crewman and two cannons. I discard those and I will get four victory points. That's the number of victory points listed there. And the first person to attack it will also get this gold piece and place it in their treasure chest. Each player has a treasure chest and this treasure chest is essentially just a way to keep track of the gems that you get over the course of the game. You just drop them in the slot there and save them. There are also colonies on the board. Um, a colony, all you need is a, a man to go in and take that one out. Um, the forts require man, men and cannons. Uh, the colonies, diff different ones give uh, silvers, some give golds, and then there are the Spanish galleons which you can attack. Those just require cannons to attack, and they also will have a tile placed out by them, by whoever takes the admiral token. So this one actually needs four cannons to take it out. Um, this the, Over here, this one actually, there was none, but I might have added two to make it five cannons to take that one out. If you take out the Spanish Galleon, you get nine victory points in this instance, and the first person to do so gets the jewels. Now, you cannot even attack the Spanish unless you've upgraded your ship to a Galleon. So that's one of the reasons that you'd want to do that. So there's different spots all over the board, and players will do those. If you successfully attack a Spanish Galleon, you'd move your marker down over here. If you attack a fort here, if you attack a colony here, and at the end of each round, you will get bonus points based on the number of different things that you've done. If you've only done one thing, let's say all you do is attack Spanish Galleons, you'll get one point. But if you've done all three different things, you will get 10 points. So it's a, a, a reason to diversify. After the round is over, or whenever you're done, you basically sail back here. The first person to sail back will get to go first in the next round. And if you sail back before doing all four of your missions, you'll get bonus points. You then do the same thing two more times, two more years, and at the end of the game, whoever has most points is the winner. But before you do that, you'll do two things. First of all, you'll get bonus points depending on how many different trade goods you have. You can see if you have four different trade goods, you'll get 26 bonus points, and you'll also reveal all the coins in your treasure chest and take points for those three, four, and five uh, for the silver, golds, and jewels, respectively. You add up all those points, most points is the winner. Well. It's definitely a Euro game, I think I think we could say. Yeah, definitely. Definitely Euro game. Even the attacking is essentially, do you have enough stuff, enough resources to beat something? True. There's only there's only one rolling of the die in a game, and that's to get the the crew members or a ghost ship. And in, and even when that happens, both of them are good options for you. Because mm -hmm. the ghost ship throws people off. Um, so let's talk about the first half first, the worker placement half. Okay. I love it. <laughs> I really Not do. No said. Well, I mean, it mixes that, that Tokaido aspect, the game Tokaido, where you could go as far as you want, and, and, but, then it, but then once you've gone that far, you can't go back. Right. And especially in the second and third round, when the, stuff, when the tiles are mixed up, that really changes things up. Yeah. I did enjoy the worker placement aspect of it. However, I think that it was a little bit uh, added on. Um, I didn't see the thematic... <laughs> well, you're traveling through town, and if you've already passed a store, you can't go back to that store, sir. I know that doesn't fit. I mean, it's it's like your crew standing there. You hit the you hit the the the. the uh, well, while he's thinking of the word, I'll tell you this: it the, may, 
the pier, I guess. Yeah, that's it. The where you dock. Okay, you hit the dock and you, you you give your grocery list to your crew and they go out and find everything that you want. That just I don't know. It just doesn't make sense to me. I liked it though. Uh, yeah, I don't think it's thematic, but it's a great mechanic. Yes. Because you'll, you're sitting there, kind of on pins and needles, thinking, okay, I really want some cannons. And I could jump up there and grab those cannons, but I'm going to skip some other stuff. Right. But I probably can get them anyway. There's Maybe. no way Sam's going to jump up and get those. And then he does, and you're like, Wah! <laughs> Yeah, exactly. And I think it, it's a cool worker placement uh, mechanic because it's, it's where interaction, um, you know, cutting people off, that type of thing enters into the game. And I think it's a necessary aspect for this theme. It's all about, you know, going for the glory of, of defeating the, the, the Spaniards on the oceans and all this kind of stuff. And you're trying to get out there and do it first and be the best at it. So I liked, the, I liked it. I just didn't think it fit thematically, that's all. Well, the part that is kind of thematic is the second half of the game, right. where you're sending ships out, and the first person there defeats the base, and the second person comes in and beats him, but you don't get the the, the extra points. And right. I think the game does a very good job of balancing the points you get for trading goods with you know with taking over. To, I mean, if, if you can conquer a lot of galleons, you're going to do really well, yeah. but you need a lot of resources. But if you do a lot of trading, I think that gives you a head up. I really think it does. Yeah, but you can cut someone off from trading. I think the problem is, as like many of these games, if one person is the only person to pursue a specific right. strategy, they will do very well in that regard. True. And this part of the game I thought was very thinky, because I'd sit there thinking, where am I going to put my discs? And I'd just sit and think for a really long time. Right. Where's my number one going? Where's my number two? Mm -hmm. And you're actually trying to outthink the other players. Right. Um, so... I'm going to just say right now, this is one of the best Euro games I've ever played. We already did our top 10 Euro games. I would have put this on the list. I definitely would have. Hmm. It gives me a feeling of other exploration games like Age of Empires 3. Yeah. Um, uh, although I'm not sure that I'm saying this one's better than that. But it's certainly one of the best worker placement games I've ever played. I really enjoy the mechanics. The pieces are gorgeous. It's easy to play. Mm -hmm. has a lot of replayability. I'm going to come out and say this is one of the best games of 2013 so far. That's how much I liked it. Hmm. Okay. I might be in that camp. I might... I don't know about best game. I'll, I'll have to I'll have to say. I, 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 we'll I, wait till the end of 2013 before we make those calls, yeah, I definitely. guess. Yeah, definitely. That's kind of jumping the gun, in my opinion. But uh, it's definitely a good game. I'm going to keep it. If that, I mean, that, that right. means a big and deal. That says a lot because he's going to make spot on his shelves. I don't know what, this. though. It's a big so game. So he's going to get rid of something, and this is going to replace it. So that's a huge thing for him to say. Um... Would I shell out the cash for it? Probably. And I'll, I'll put it that way because, first of all, you have to have the cash for it. And then you have to think, am I going to buy it? <laughs> well, if I have the cash <laughs> and it's standing there in front of me, I'll probably buy it. Uh, okay. I'll probably buy it. So the it's it's one of those things where it it has all the mechanics that I enjoy in a Euro game. And it's not over the top. It's not It's not one of those games where I felt like I was uh, lynched into doing what the game wanted me to do. That's true. You do have a lot of, I mean, I mean, you don't have a ton of options, but it's a, it's a solid game that gives you, you, you choices. Choose. You choose what you want to do, then you face the consequences at the end of the game when you, when you tally the points, whether your choices were good or not. That's the kind of Euro game that I enjoy playing. I don't like the kind of games to where you have to do this, you have to do that, you have to do this. Oh, you don't want to do that right now? Well, okay, you don't have to do it now, but you'll do it later. No, I don't like that kind of stuff. This game is not like that. You have choices. The choices you, you make determine how well you do. So um, I'm going to go ahead and give this uh, two swashbucklers up. Ching, ching. All, all right, I'm going to get... I was going to say, okay. I, uh, Got it. Yeah! I'll give this the severed theme that Kinesia should be adding to his game up, plus the severed... Uh, I, I, I give it two thumbs up. There you go. <laughs> I can't even think of something good. I'm so ashamed. <laughs> All right. Sir Francis Drake, a very good game. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching the Dice Tower. 
The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. <laughs>